How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, I want to give you an RVs batteries buyer's guide. There's so many different types of styles of RVing out there that I don't think there's a one size fits all battery for all RVers. So I'm going to give you a handful of recommendations and who this might be a good fit for. So there are some great options out there, everything from lithium to just a very simple battery. So uh, let's get started and we're going to start off at the top of the list and we're going to begin with lithium. It is by far the battery with the most amount of advantages out there. Lithium batteries are for the RVers that are looking for the, the best battery, usually with some kind of an inverter and a solar setup because they're going to be the lightest, longest lasting, most compact, takes up the least amount of space, most efficient, same capacity with a large draw, the best warranty, no maintenance, has less internal resistance, so it's like getting an extra solar panel for your solar setup, and it can take the deepest discharge repeatedly without harming the battery. So you can see why it's gonna be one of the, the number one choices for RVers that have the inverter with a solar setup. There isn't going to be another battery on this list that can match all those advantages. Now, on the flip side of the coin, there's going to be a much larger upfront cost. And I think that's one of the, the biggest things about lithium is there's a, a large upfront cost. Now, they, they last extremely long. Some of these have 10-year warranties, some lifetime warranties. So it's going to last a much, much longer time than your typical RV battery. The second thing that is typically a drawback is you can't charge it when it's freezing. But this usually has some pretty easy workarounds. For one, usually people put the, the battery bank inside the RV so it's protected from the cold. You can do heating pads. But the one thing to keep in mind if you're worried about it freezing is when you use it, you can use it well below freezing. It actually warms up those cells. So once you have that, the cell warm up, the, the temperature sensor in there will allow it to charge because the battery itself has warmed up. So you just use the battery and then you can charge it up. So between putting it in a conditioned space, uh, using a heating pad or using the batteries themselves to warm them up, uh, this is easy to overcome. Now with lithium batteries, you have a few options. You can build your own batteries, which can get pretty involved. You can buy used ones and hope for a low cycle count, or you can buy uh, a Battleborn or the Lion Energy Safari 1300, or you can look at Life Blue. Those are a few of the, the top brands. Now, my number Number one pick right now is the Lion Energy Safari 1300 because it has more features, higher specs at a lower price. They actually gave me a code to share with you guys. So if you wanted to enter in all about RVs, you could save 15% off of each battery. So that'll save you $150 off of each one. And that's what gives it the, the lowest price point compared to the other batteries in this category. So let's take a, a closer look at it. First off, this has one of the longest warranties. It's a lifetime warranty. So they, they estimate that this battery will last between 3,500 to 5,000 cycles. 3,500 is extreme use. And after that, it should still have 80% of the capacity. And that's what the lifetime warranty is for. Number two, as I've been running some tests, it's exceeded its 105 amp hour capacity when I've been using a space heater on them. So uh, a decent size draw, and it's exceeded the amount of capacity that it's been rated for. The third one, which I think is one of the most impressive things, is it can have a 150 amps out continuous. So that means you can have two of these batteries paired with a 3000 watt inverter and the inverter is not gonna overdraw on those batteries. You're not gonna be limited by how much your, your battery bank can put out. So if you have a 3000 watt inverter, that's gonna be 250 amps. These combined can put out 300 amps continuous. You're, you're not gonna get backed up by your battery bank. And I've tested this too, and it actually overperformed on its promise. So the reason why that this is so important is because you can get two batteries. So you don't need as big of a battery bank necessary to be able to power that inverter. So it becomes a question of how much capacity you would like rather than how many batteries do you need to be able to perform the task of running everything that that inverter is capable of. And to top it off, it has the smallest dimensions and the lightest weight coming in at around 23 pounds. So to wrap it up on lithium, I love the Battleborn batteries. I think the Lion Energy Safari 1300 is my top pick for now, but they're both excellent batteries. So uh, let's move on to the next battery, which is going to be AGM. This battery is going to be for the RVer that still has some kind of solar and inverter setup, but doesn't want that big upfront cost that lithium comes with. They still want maintenance free and they're willing to compromise on the size and space uh, to be able to get the same amount of capacity out of their batteries. 
An AGM battery begins us in the, the lead acid battery. So there's a few things that we wanna keep in mind, but usually you'll look at AGM and gel. Typically AGM is a little bit more popular for RVers. Uh, these are going to be sealed batteries with no maintenance needed for th this type of battery. So if you look at the things that kill lead acid batteries, maintenance won't be the one that kills it on the AGM because we don't have any maintenance on this. The other things that, that kill lead acid batteries are, are things like overcharging it, discharging it too deeply, leaving it depleted too long and excessive heat for lead acid batteries. It just brings the life expectancy way down. So my pick for a, a maintenance free lead acid battery, so this is gonna include gel and AGM, uh, those type of batteries is gonna be the, the, the VMAX at $269 for 100 amp hours. Batteries Plus also typically has an AGM battery that, that's very comparable and competitive in price. But if we were to look at this, this VMAX and we wanted to build the same battery bank that we had with the lithium, the 210 amp hours, uh, we would have to have four of these. So that would bring us to the, the price of $1,080. The reason why we picked the battery bank to be that size is because if we look at the chart, if we want our batteries to last a thousand cycles for this AGM battery, we need to bring it down to only 50%. And you would do that that by having a good battery monitor. We've done videos on battery monitors. My favorite ones are the, the Victron. They're extremely reliable and very accurate, uh, but you want to, to bring these down to 50%. Yes, you can bring them down to 75%, but if you look at the chart, you're only gonna get 600 cycles out of that. So um, it really depends on how long you want those batteries to last. Now, if you wanted to look at a lower cost AGM, you could look at the UB121000, it's on Amazon. But if you look at the life expectancy, if you bring that to a 50% depth of discharge, you're only gonna get 500 cycles out of it. So it's not even quite half the price, but you're gonna get half the life out of it. So uh, that's why VMAX is my number one pick for AGM batteries. Now, if you still want more out of your battery bank, but you're still looking at over a thousand dollars to be able to go AGM, just to really have the benefit of being maintenance free, then that's usually when you start looking at golf cart batteries. And that's gonna be the next one on our list. Before we dive into the golf cart batteries, I just wanna do a quick side note on venting for batteries. So the thing about lead acid batteries, they have to be vented to the outside. So we had a bay here that had vents to the outside so that none of those fumes would go on the inside of the RV. So you can't just put them in a storage bay or inside the RV if you're sticking with lead acid batteries. They need to be vented to the, the outside. So we were stuck with just two lead acid batteries that we had for a capacity on this RV. The other thing to remember is you wanna have a good converter to be matched with your battery. So if you're sticking with lead acid, you wanna have a good multi-stage converter. If you're going with lithium, you want to have a lithium charger to be able to get the full capacity out of those lithium batteries. You can use a multi-stage charger typically on those lithium batteries like a, a Battleborn and the Lion Energy, but you're not going to get the full capacity and the most use out of them. So it doesn't make sense to spend that much on a battery and not get the, the proper charger for your battery. So those are just a couple things to remember. Okay, now that we have that little bit of information out of the way, let's continue about six volt golf cart batteries. So this is gonna be for two types of RVers. You're, you're not afraid of maintenance. You really want something that doesn't have a huge upfront cost like we're looking at with AGM or lithium, uh, but you're wanting a little bit more out of your, your battery bank. So uh, you can still have a larger golf cart battery bank if you're doing an inverter and a solar setup and you want more out of it, or if you just wanna be able to have two batteries paired together to be able to get more capacity so that you're not worried about your, your heater fan drawing too much and depleting your battery Batteries. So uh, you still want to be able to have some more capacity without having to, to go to a more expensive option. Now, when you're looking at golf cart batteries, you have to buy them in pairs because usually they're gonna come as a six volt battery and you need to, to wire them in series. When you wire them in series, you don't add the amp hours, uh, but you add the voltage. So you wire the two of them in series, two six volt golf cart batteries, and you get a 12 volt battery bank when you wire them in pairs. So your options will need to be in pairs. So two, four, or six batteries for a, a battery bank. Now moving to golf cart batteries, we might've decreased the amount of upfront cost, but we've increased the maintenance. So now we have fluid levels to check. Uh, we need to make sure that they're charged properly, that they're equalized. Uh, there's a lot more things involved to, to getting lower end lead acid batteries. So there's more maintenance to be stacked on top of them. Now my picks for golf cart batteries, usually Trojan has been the, the gold standard standard in this department, but a lot of people have been switching over to the Duracell because of the lower price and similar specs. 
So looking at the price of the Duracell batteries, if we were to buy two, uh, that is around $350. Now with a 50% depth of discharge, that gives us a capacity of 117 amp hours, right around that range. So if we were to buy four of them, that puts us at $700 and we have 235 amp hours of usable capacity out of these batteries. So in a nutshell, the six volt golf cart battery is gonna give you the, the best deep cycle battery with the lowest upfront cost. So uh, let's move on to just the simple, most basic battery out there, just your, your typical RV Marine 12 volt battery. Now this is one that's gonna be for the RVer that really just wants to be able to turn on the lights and have the slides be able to move in and out and you're not asking a whole lot out of your battery. Typically you're gonna be going to RV parks, you're gonna be plugging in most of the time, but you still wanna be able to have the, the lights turn on and the slides move in and out when you're not connected to power. Now you're typically gonna be able to get a battery like this for around $100. It's not gonna do as well deeply discharging it as the golf cart, the AGM, or especially the lithium, but it gets things working and operational in your RV. You can pair two of them together. You're gonna to pair them together in parallel. So if you have a place for, for two batteries and you want to be able to run that furnace through the night or you wanna be able to have the, the lights on and the slides in and out, it gives you that extra capacity. But you're not gonna be expecting a whole lot out of your battery, bank if you're doing uh, these RV Marine 12 volt batteries. But like I said, if you're an RVer that goes to RV parks all the time and that's kind of where you go, then this really might be the battery that best suits your needs. Now, a couple of pointers as you're trying to compare batteries side by side. Number one, you wanna look at the same rated capacity. So especially in lead acid, you wanna look at the 20 hour rate. That's kind of the, the given number. Uh, for lithium, that's still a 20 hour rate, but it's not as important. If you have a big load on lithium or a small load, you're still gonna get very close to that, that rated capacity on the battery. Compared to lead acid, the more you pull out of the battery, the faster you're doing that, the less capacity you're gonna have in that battery. So you wanna be able to compare those evenly. Also, you wanna look at life cycle of the battery. So just for a quick example, if we look at that VMAX chart, if we look at 50% and 75% on that, we can see what we would expect out of the life of it. We can also look at another chart and we can see the, the temperature and what that is going to do to the life of the battery and how much it's going to deplete it. So looking at these charts and being able to compare is really gonna help you make the best decision. So if you're looking for any of the batteries that we talked about in this video, there'll be links down in the description. Uh, remember, if you use that code all about RVs at Lion Energy, you can save 15% off of each battery. Uh, but I think that's gonna do it for today. I think that's gonna be a wrap. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.